Yeah. Well, um, something about the Linux project in Unique, and I have to say at first, I'm not a developer, I'm a user. I use the software you are developing, and I want to show you why and what uh, are we using free software and open standards in Munich. Um, let me start a short explanation what is Munich. Okay, it's a um, very big city in Germany, in the southern part of Germany, and some impressions. Um, on the upper left corner, you see our beautiful city hall. And if you have been to Grand Plaza here in Brussels, you see the original. In Munich, we have a copy of it. So it's a backup of um, the city hall from Brussels. And another um, short and very good link to Brussels. Um, who have attended the beer event yesterday? A few? OK, most of them. Uh, we in Munich has also a beer event every year in October, the Oktoberfest, maybe you know. Um, but it was awesome yesterday being here in the beer event of Fostum. Really great. OK, that's Munich, southern part of Germany, one of the IT centers in Europe. What are we doing? Well, um, there are many, many rumors about the Linux project and why we started it in the past. And the only reason why we started to think about free software and open standard was Microsoft. Microsoft told us you can't use the operating system and the office system you are using at the moment in 2001, I think they told us. So we had to look for alternatives and we did it, we decided to use alternatives, not the way Microsoft thought we would do. What have we done um, during the past? We decided in 2003, and maybe you've heard about it, in 2004, 5, 6, 7, and so on. Why is not finished already? Well, um, we are preparing. We are doing prototyping, and during the last two years, our main focus was to get rid of the vendor logins in the office product to get open office running everywhere in our city. That's the first login we have to get rid of. One business application, legacy application, something like this, using exactly one exchange format, using one API for one office product by Microsoft. And this office product just runs under a Microsoft operating system. Though it was our task to get rid of this to open up our office infrastructure in the first step, running open office on Windows clients and Linux clients, and then be prepared for the next step. After using open standards, we can use open source everywhere for the desktop, for the operating system, for the office product. Though the upcoming two years will be our client rollout phase, now we completed the switch to open office. As I told you, our city council decided to go to free software and open standard for our desktops um, and to be more platform open in the business applications. Why did he decide this? As I told you, a Microsoft company finished support and said, go, go ahead, take the next version, take the next license. So we did a pre-study. And we examined different alternatives for our future and we told our city council members, well, um, you can go on using Microsoft products. That's no problem. Um, you invest some money in licenses. And um, yes, would be fine. But uh, think a little, a little bit further. You can also invest some money, some more money, for, um, for instance. But you can have many benefits. You can have many benefits. Do you want to? choose yourself what you really want to do with your IT infrastructure. So they agreed. We said, OK, let's increase the independence, not only from one software vendor, but from the whole ecosystem built on proprietary software, consultants, platforms, timelines, and so on. Then another argument was, well, dear members of city council, we have a very strong economy in Germany, in Europe especially in the sector of small and medium-sized enterprises, offering solutions on free software and open standards, consultancy, support, and so on. Do you want to invest in the local economy, or do you want to invest in one big global player situated in the US? We do not 
uh, we are not uh, unhappy about the US, but um, we are unhappy about one global player in this field. Yes, and our city council said, okay, it's a nice idea, more competition, um, let's do this. Um, well, short, one short story at this point. At last year's CBIT trade fair in Hannover, it's the world's largest IT tra trade fair, I walked through the empty halls, exhibitors, uh, visiting exhibitors, no visitors there, but okay, that's another story. And one Microsoft guy talked to the audience, wow, it's great, we are big economic power here in Germany, there are about 33,000 certified Microsoft partners. That's real economy. Everyone can take part in this market and many, many small, medium-sized companies. Wow, it's great. It's really great. 33,000 certified Microsoft partners. People who can offer services for Microsoft solutions. I had a talk, a talk afterwards and I told the audience it's great. In the field of free software and open standards, especially in Germany, there are about 80 million people who can participate in the free market. Every citizen is possible to take part in this market. Of course, that's a funny example, but it's exactly what we want to achieve. Not one company controlling who can start participating in the market by certification or something like this. Everyone can if he wants. So more competition in the software market and of course for us it's a reason as public administration to save costs, not in the short term. Staying with the same system you are running, in our case Microsoft software, will, be, will have lower cost. But save money in the long term because of the increased independence is one of our targets. Our current numbers, as I told you before, um, we did it. We did the complete switch to OpenOffice using the open document format, the open standard for our internal document exchange. And we linked it. We linked it to many, many business applications we are using. For example, SAP for human resource management and our financial management. We get open documents. Um, we get documents in open document format from these business applications and can edit it using OpenOffice or any other implementation. We are using OpenOffice in Unix. Additional 28,000 OpenOffice installations in Unix schools. Why this? Um, because we do not want to say to the parents of our uh, pupils, you have to buy licenses if your children want to take part in the lessons. So you can, you, <coughs> you can use Microsoft software at home, you can use um, open source software at home. In school you find everything. Um, well, and during the last two years we did many, many pilot projects for the next step. We are actually preparing to switch over the desktop operating system to a Linux-based operating system, and there are about two and a half thousand clients running at the moment. And 50% of the estimated budget still available, so it's not a project running out of costs. Some more technical details. We are here at Fostam, of course. Um, so we use completely free operating system as a base for our desktop clients, in our case a Debian client, it could even be a Ubuntu client, a Fedora client, an OpenSUSE client or something like this, doesn't matter, we use um, free software as distribution, of course we are Germans, we are using the KDE um, desktop environment, I'm sorry, um, not, GNOME is not bad, um, KDE is not better, um, we've chosen KDE and it's the situation in Munich. OpenOffice, as I told you, and we use Thunderbird and Firefox, and I pronounce it Thunderbird and Firefox. We do not use IceWeasel or iStuff. Um, instead, we, have, we are using Debian. 
For software distribution, some tools written in the University of Cologne, fully automatic installation for software distribution, and another web-based uh, installer, um, Goza, it's called Gonico System Administrator, to administer our clients. Well, some screenshots, it's nothing new for you. You know how a desktop, a Linux desktop looks like some unique impressions also for our employees, so it's a nice tool. It's a nice desktop, you are happy starting this, you're seeing uh, some impressions from the, your city, again, our um, city hall, the copy of the Brussels one um, at the beginning. Well, this is um, nearly my last, my last slide. Why I'm showing you this? That's the slide I'm showing to public administrations and governments I'm talking to. But I, want, I also will that you see what we are talking to them, and that's our message. People, as public administration, you are spending the money of your taxpayers. You do not spend uh, money anyone um, donates to you or something like this. You're spending the money of your taxpayers, so you have a social responsibility, in our opinion. And you have two choices invest this money into the right to use software, then buy licenses, no problem. Or invest this money at first into the economy, maybe local economy, in this area of open source software and open standards. Many, many uh, companies, as I told you before, but uh, use, choosing this alternative, there's a second benefit for you. The second benefit will be Every result, every gained knowledge during this investment in free software is available to everyone. So, dear public administrations, um, choose do you want to buy licenses or do you want to invest in economy and in knowledge of your people? And exactly this is um, what we are trying to increase in talks and discussions and so on but we are talking to others, so if, feel free, if you meet your politicians, ask them exactly the same questions, um, I will hear the answers. And there are some initiatives around Europe. Um, have a look at osoa.eu, it's a network for collaboration among public authorities, and it's spreading. Collaboration would be a great benefit for many, many of us for the future using the software you are writing, you are developing, you are improving also in the public sector. So it's nearly the end. Um, thank you very much for your attention. If you want to have further information, feel free um, to ask. I'm here today, I'm here tomorrow, and uh, speaking in Web 2.0, please follow me, um, maybe on Identica or on Twitter. Thank you very much.